Alright, so a week of climbing training. In this video, I cover my Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday from a couple of weeks ago of just a casual week of climbing. I would approach a more casual session to still try to improve from week to week without necessarily having too much of a program. If you're in the middle of like changing projects or you have a lot of other training going on, it might not always be the case that you have too much of a, of a rigid program with the climbing. So it might be an interesting, uh, interesting thing to check out. By the way, if you have seen the climbing video I posted a few weeks ago, that will be day one of this. So click to this timestamp if you've already seen that. But without further ado, I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you want more climbing content as well. I, it is something I do quite regularly. So yeah, it's not actually the one on pull up every day and only that, believe it or not. But uh, yeah, without further ado, here's the video. Enjoy, guys. Tuesday. Today's my first day of climbing so far this week. And as you guys can see, I start off with warming up on some easier climbs. Pretty early on, I spot this slab, which seems interesting, so I give it a couple of attempts. But I switch over to this easier route on the side to get a bit more warmed up. Pretty smooth start, but I'm fumbling a bit at the top. Eventually, I manage to get into a somewhat stable position and secure the top hole with both hands. Then, back to the slab for a few attempts. As you guys can probably tell, slabs are not a strong suit to my climbing, but that only means I should pay more attention to them. After some playing around, I decide to leave it for another time as I have a few routes in mind for this session. I want to stay somewhat on track. The gym is pretty packed today, so lots of people on the wall, but I find this pincher route that is not yet occupied and decide to give it a go. The routes in this gym are colour coded, and you can see the different colours and corresponding grade ranges on the screen. This pincher route with blue holds is a red boulder problem. Also, the top holds are not marked by the way, so you'll just have to trust me that the top is where I point it out to be. The blue holds are somewhat awkward pinches, especially with my hand placement. I could definitely have visualised it more from the ground and figured out a better beta, but I got the flash figuring out the route as I went up, so no stress. Then there's this other red route I've tried a few times in a prior session, so I want to see how my performance is today. It's got some funky moves for sure, as you guys can see these big slopey cones are somewhat taxing to hang on to, but maintaining good body tension and getting my feet back on the wall quickly when my legs peel off, I slowly get up. Then I see a familiar face in the climbing gym and the initial plan I had for the session kind of goes in the bin, not gonna lie. She's working on this overhanging red problem with green holds. I haven't done this route before and it seems cool, so she shows me a current beta and we give it a good couple of tries. As you can see, it's got this funky heel hook, toe clamp sort of move. I find this to be quite difficult as you can probably tell from the video. It feels very strange and it's not like much I've done before. So it takes me longer than expected, but eventually I have a bit of a breakthrough and manage to use the heel effectively to get to the next part of the sequence. Having managed what seems like the crux once, I start playing around with the start. However, when I get to the heel hook again, I realise my body has no recollection of how I did the move the first time around, and with the extra fatigue that comes from having attempted the problem from the start, I drop off. In climbing, muscle memory from having practiced particular moves over and over again is very important, and so I decide to keep practicing this heel move until I can get it consistently. But several attempts later, I have not managed to stick it another time, and I'm left questioning what I'm even doing. I see another guy working on the same route and ask him how he does it. I give it a few more goes, but decide to leave the route for today and come back to it next time, hopefully with my subconscious mind having worked on it well enough for this to be an easier challenge then. The same guy tells me about this black problem he's working on, and I decide to give it a few goes before moving on to some strength training. To begin with, going for the heel hook seems promising, but eventually we realise that a knee bar would set up for a much easier time to get up the latter half. Oh well, it will have to wait till next time. 
At this point I feel pretty tired as the red roof with green holes took quite some strength out of me and did a fair bit of heal and finger damage given the heal hook toe clamp situation and the rather rough crimpy halt. Initially today's strength session was supposed to be Max Sang's on the 15mm edge but being somewhat tired and not wanting to risk a potential finger injury I will instead go for sub Max Sang's on the 15mm edge and do some weighted pull ups right after. I build up to 15kg on the 15mm edge for a 10 second hold followed by 5 speedy weighted pull up reps on the jugs. Repeat for 3 rounds total then some stretching. But it got really crowded at the gym, even in the strength section, so I did my mobility work and wrapped up the front split stretches at home later in the evening. Then on to Thursday. I start the session off with some strength training. Usually it will vary a bit from session to session, whether I begin with an activity such as climbing or jujitsu, or if I start with strength training. For today I had set myself a goal of getting in a good couple of banded one-arm pull-up reps, so I figured it'd be wise to get them in before I'd be too fatigued from climbing. I paired this up with barbell back squats and lower body mobility drills. For the squats, I'm for the first time experimenting with using a yoga block for heel elevation to see how it impacts my squat form. So nothing crazy in terms of weight, but I'm trying to feel out these new squats along with some wide stands, deeper ones. My squat form is not the best, so I'm trying to dedicate some time to working on it. Then I do some stretches and in between do a few rounds of minimal edge hangs. For this session I'm getting in a few ish 5 second holds on a 10mm edge. After a pretty good strength and mobility session I'm ready for climbing. Unfortunately I realise that the routes I work with on Tuesday in the steep overhang section have been removed. Too bad, but I sort of have this one red project at the other side of the gym so I decide to start with that. This is quite a funky problem, it starts rather low in quite a compressed position before you rise to a sloper which aids you in moving your legs to the right side, then you move into a gaston and shift your weight to allow for a higher left leg and from here you have a slight little jump up to another gaston like position. The hold I'm grabbing with my right arm looks pretty good but it is rounded and it's kinda hard to stay on. Holding this position whilst moving your legs requires some decent body tension once the right foot is placed on top of this smaller triangular volume, I have enough leverage to push paw into the wall in the necessary manner to not drop down. And from here the top is pretty alright. Having solved the red problem with purple holds, and not really having a lot of projects in the pipeline, I decide to just test out whatever might look fun or challenging. I spot this red problem with yellow holds and start playing around with the different sections. I quickly realise that the top is pretty alright and dedicate some good attempts to the bottom part. Eventually, I find a good beta and give the whole route to go. Now I realise I'm running pretty low on time as the strength and mobility session ended up taking quite some time and I still have some uni work to be sorted later in the evening so I decide to give this red problem with blue hold to go. I have actually sent it a few weeks before this but I figure it will be a nice way to end the session by checking if I'm still worthy so to speak. I give it a quick read from the ground and then go for it. Sunday. Then for the third and final session of the week, today is Sunday and we're back. Today I start off the session with climbing. I get warmed up on some easier problems and then start working on this red problem with blue holds. Before I get properly started though, I set a timer on my phone for some 20-ish minutes. This way it will be easier to put in some good attempts and have a focus go at the route rather than jump around from boulder to boulder, not really making any real progress. It's also nice with the time limit so you know that quote unquote whatever happens you'll move on to the next problem after that duration so you don't have to struggle for ages with a problem if you seem completely stuck. There are times when you'd want to spend way more time in a problem of course but I find it nice to use a timer when I want a concise session and I don't really have any huge ongoing projects that would require more attention. This way I can get through a select number of problems 
without necessarily spending too much time but getting in some high quality attempts and some high quality visualization and just problem solving. As you can see the heel hook in the start of this boulder is pretty powerful and it takes me several attempts to get used to pulling that intensely with my heel. As you probably remember from the Tuesday session with the overhang and heel hook toe clamp situation, I'm not the best at heel hooks, so giving them some extra attention is very helpful for bettering my climbing. There we go, just got it. But to develop some better muscle memory and work some more on the heel hook, I want to work on the start for a couple of more reps. Alright, since I've started targeting my weak points, I decided to go over to the slab section. As I said earlier in the video, I'm not good at slabs and therefore I don't find them as fun as overhang routes for example, but I tried to get at least one session per week where I dedicate some good attempts to working on some slabs. Seems like today is that day. I start out with a blue route, which seems pretty doable. I had a few small surprises along the way and some jumps I had to commit to that seemed a bit strange, but eventually I get up and then refocus my attention to an even trickier slab on the side. This does not exactly look simple, and to be honest, coming into this, I really doubt I'll be able to solve it, but why not give it a try? There is lots of room for me to grow on slabs. Worst thing that happens is that I cannot send it, so I set a timer for 20 minutes again and get started on the grind. The start is a tricky no feet jump into this angled volume and sort of undercling. It is a shit. The next section requires some careful body positioning and precise movements. Committing to this jump feels quite uncertain, but I just have to go for it. Nice, I'm still on the wall, let's go. And holding these two slopey holds is not easy. Let me just move my foot here. Ah, never mind. Back to the drawing board, I guess. In the end, I work on a few of the top moves and make a bit of progress, but nothing groundbreaking before the end of the 20 minute timer. Then, on to today's strength session. I'm now going in for some more band assisted one armors. I pair this with mobility drills for my hips and low back. Comment down below by the way if you want to see videos on mobility and bulletproofing. And at the end of the strength session I opt for some pinch hangs. Here I'm going for 5 second holds off of these two pinches. Alright, did a few sets of those pinch hangs and after that I feel pretty good. So let's see how my performance is on this black route with yellow holds. I've done it a few weeks back but it's got some tricky heel hooks and has a cool style to it. So I think it's good practice. Plus it fits well with this weak sort of theme given the heel hooks I guess. Then I spot this other black route I'm yet to try. So to end the session on a high note, I decide to give it a few good attempts. Starts off from a decent double crimp and left heel hook, although it looks like I used a toe hook here perhaps. Then a heel hook on the start holds to get to this bigger joggy side pull. Some bumping action, then the rather tricky body tension section. Ah well, not today, probably a different beta, but I'll figure it out in the future. But let me see if I can do part of the second half. Little Gaston action here, nice. And then the rest seems pretty straightforward. There we go, actually sent the top half. To my surprise, several of the sections and moves seem to flow pretty well. Seems like I just found myself a new project. I mean, it's got a few tricky areas to it, but I did better than I initially thought on this, so it shouldn't take too many sessions, I think. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. So there you have it, a few of the routes this week were particularly difficult as I didn't have any bigger set projects this week but it is a pretty good representation of what my general training structure might look like. Some weeks my sessions are longer and some weeks they're shorter but the goal for me is to find the balance between strength training, working on different skills, improving flexibility and mobility as well as developing better skills on the wall, so actually climbing, as well as improving my Jiu Jitsu. If you want to see a full week of strength and skills training, along with both climbing as well as Jiu Jitsu and everything that comes with, comment down below. But to wrap up this video, I wanted to sum up some takeaways in terms of how you could combine several types of training or structure your sessions. Firstly, it can be nice to use timers, for example 20 to 30 minutes in a route, and then when it runs out you'll evaluate whether you want to continue for a little bit or move on. This is a nice way to avoid either just jumping around from border to border and not really making any real progress and also to avoid the situations where you've spent like an entire session on one problem and you also kind of feel like you haven't really done too much so it's a nice way to sort of okay get in a good set of problems like 
perhaps some variety as well and you have you know little selection there and you allow them to they all need some attention and they all get some attention but you don't waste the entire session on them and you're also not just jumping around like a maniac then it can also be nice to just change around around the uh, the format sort of the structure of your training sessions depending on what is especially important for you for that day for example starting the session off with strength training then climbing if you have some particularly important strength work for that day maybe a very important lift for you that is lacking or you know something that is really important for you to to get in and have as high quality as possible maybe that gets priority over the climbing so you start the session off with that or you could for example start with climbing then have a little bit of a strength session and then do climbing again and this is probably more applicable if you've got strength training that doesn't focus too much on fingers or pull training so you're a bit more sort of fresh in those muscles for for climbing the last bit at the end and then the third option would be to just start climbing climb until you're fully done with that and then move on to some strength work or perhaps more mobility stability that type of thing depending on how much energy you've got left for some heavier lifts another point i want to add is that your sessions don't have to be super long if you have clear objectives for your sessions and use timers to dedicate some proper focus time and attempts do a few border problems each session, you'll see consistent progress over time. Oh and by the way, comment down below like how long are your usual climbing sessions and how do you structure your training? I'd love to know and I'm sure a lot of people in the comments would love to hear what you guys have to say as well. Also for the final point I wanted to note that some days it might be a higher priority to do strength work, mobility drills and stretching, whereas other times you might have more time to dedicate purely to climbing and skills on the wall. Remember though that there is a law of diminishing returns that applies here. So spending an extra hour per week doing more pull-ups for example may not be as valuable as doing an extra hour per week of stretching or specific mobility drills. So this is also something to keep in mind. Sometimes it might be more return on investment all round in your training to give some attention to flexibility as opposed to climbing or to give that attention to climbing as opposed to strength training or vice versa in any configuration that it might you know happen thanks for watching now if you like this video you might enjoy this one that pops up on the screen right now it's about how to use parkour moves to improve your bouldering specifically to get more dynamic bouldering so if that sounds interesting click the card on screen right now but as always remember to keep on training train what you love and i'll see you in the next one cheers guys